So here we'll continue to define some general features of enzymes that will help you as we get into enzyme kinetic and structure function and the regulation of enzymes. So amino acid based enzymes are globular proteins that range in size from 100 to more than 2000 amino acid residues. These amino acids can be arranged as one or more polypeptide chain that are folded and bent to form a specific three-dimensional structure incorporating a small area known as the active site where the substrate actually binds with the enzyme. The active site may well only involve a small number of amino acids, less than 10 usually. So it's the shape and the charge properties of the active site that enable it to bind a specific type of substrate molecule so that the enzyme is able to demonstrate considerable specificity in its catalytic activity. Some enzymes require a cofactor to be functional. This can be a small organic molecule, like NAD in the case of lactate dehydrogenase, or a metal ion that helps mediate the reaction. Small organic molecules that can bind and be released by the enzyme are called coenzymes. If the small organic molecule binds really tightly to the enzyme, they are called prosthetic groups. When an enzyme that requires a cofactor does not contain its cofactor, it is called the apoenzyme or without the enzyme cofactor. Usually apoenzymes are not functional. They require the binding of their cofactor to actually be active and form the holoenzyme. So the holoenzyme includes both the protein portion and the cofactor portion. Note that not all enzymes require cofactors. Some work independently just with the protein sequence itself. And section 6.4 provides an introduction to the energetics of enzyme reaction. So recall that enzymes enhance reaction rates. They make reactions go faster, but they don't alter the equilibrium of the reaction. They don't determine how much product or how much substrate will be left once the reaction reaches equilibrium. They will just get the reaction to reach equilibrium more quickly. Recall that equilibrium, the K equilibrium constant, is a function of the product concentration at the endpoint over the substrate concentration. And this is going to be determined by the inherent nature of the substrates and the products. A notable feature of enzymes and how they work is that they form a complex with the substrate. They physically bind to the substrate. You have to have the formation of the ES complex to produce the product, and then the enzyme will release that product. In terms of energetic, reactions can either be exergonic releasing energy or endergonic consuming energy. This reaction shown is exergonic. It will release energy, meaning that the products have lower energy than the reactants. If this was an endergonic reaction, the products would have higher energy than the reactants and the delta G would be positive and the reaction would be unfavorable. A negative delta G indicates that the reaction will be favorable. So enzymes cannot change the overall change in Gibbs free energy for a reaction. That's determined by the inherent nature of the reactants and product and by the concentration of both of these within the system. Recall that temperature will also affect the change in Gibbs free energy for a reaction, but that this is usually not a factor in biological systems as the temperature is predominantly held constant within organisms. So what enzymes do in the reaction is they tend to reduce the activation energy that's required to start the reaction process. So this second graph shows what the catalyzed reaction looks like compared to the uncatalyzed reaction. When the enzyme is present, that hurdle to start the reaction becomes much lower than the uncatalyzed reaction. Ultimately, enzymes make this transition state of the reaction more likely to occur. Note, however, that this cannot make an endergonic reaction exergonic. That again is mainly dependent on the nature of the reactants and the products. In the next section, 
we will begin to introduce enzyme kinetics. 